Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I'm going to be testing six mascaras for you. I am going to be taking these mascaras and putting them head to head against each other in a test in which I wear them all day long and I check in every few hours to see how they're doing. So I rate the mascaras ba based on uh, how well they do what they claim to do, how much length they give, how much volume they give, how much curl they provide or hold, as well as how they wear, how much flanking and clumping there is, and how they apply. So, in the course of this video, you are going to see six different mascaras from low end to high end. There are so many mascaras out there on the market to narrow it down to just six to put into a video was pretty hard. I actually tested a lot more than six, but these were the six that made the cut to get into the video. A lot of them were just average. And so, you know, I didn't want the video to go on forever and ever, so I weeded them out. The six brands that I'm trying today, there's one from Jordana, because I always heard great things about Jordana and never tried one of their products. There's one from Milani, uh, had been hearing great things about Milani products, so decided to give a couple of those a try. Uh, there's one from Tarte, there's one from MAC, uh, there's one from CoverGirl, and there's one from L'Oreal. Now that leaves out a whole world of mascaras, I know. And so I know a lot of you will say, well, what about this one, and what about that one, and what about the tubing ones? Um, I, as I said, I can't cover everything in one video. I do have a personal prejudice against the tubing ones. A lot of people have written in and told me that they love them, but unfortunately, I don't love them. I've tried many of them, and while, yes, they do wear great, um, I hate the removal because I feel like the little tubes just break up into tiny pieces and even after I wash my face and splash and splash and splash and splash and rinse and then take a shower the next day, I still have little black spots of those all over my face. So, okay, on to the parameters. So, in order to level the playing field in all my makeup testing videos where I'm putting products head to head, I try to make it as fair as possible. So, in order to do that, I don't use uh, extra products with it. So in this case, there will be no eyelash primers, which, you know, I wouldn't use anyway. There's a few of these that say that they curl your lashes or that the wand, the wand does something to curl your lashes. So when I started recording these, I didn't curl my lashes. On the rest of them, I was like, oh, people are going to ask me, you know, how does it hold a curl? So then what I started doing is I started curling one eye, but not the other to see, you know, how it held the curl during the day. So sorry, that's a little inconsistent. Uh, hopefully you can forgive me. I applied two coats of each mascara. Uh, and you know, it's, it's hard to determine like what is a coat? How many passes do you do? I didn't do just like, okay, here's three passes of this. I figure a coat is like, you know, as many passes as it takes to get a def decent coverage for the first coat where you feel like you need to insert the wand back into the tube. So that's what I consider to be a coat. And on the days that I did this, I tried to use the same makeup around the mascara so that like the same eyeliners, the same under eye concealer, um, the same basic eyeshadows, at least, you know, mattes, because I didn't want, sometimes it, you know, a concealer can make your mascara smudge, and sometimes your eyeliner can smudge, and you're not sure if it's the eyeliner or the mascara. So I tried to keep those consistent throughout. I will talk about the product, tell you what its claims are, tell you what its price point is, then I will cut to the video showing you me applying it for the first time, then I come back like three or four hours later, uh, six or eight hours later and 10 to 12 hours later to show you how it wore throughout the entire day. So I'm going to try to cut those down pretty quickly. I'm not sure if I will show you, you know, all the video of me applying because that's going to get pretty boring. But at the end, I'll do a roundup where I show you all six side by side, first applied and then all six side by side uh, 12 hours later. So you can really get the full picture because I think when you look at it that way, some of them really stand out as good and some of them really stand out as bad. Oh, and the last thing is that I'm going to talk about them in this video from worst to best. So the first one I mentioned will be the one that I liked the least and <clears throat> the last one I mentioned will be the one that I like the best and I consider to be the winner in this test. So let's get started. All right, the first mascara is Jordana Best Lash Extreme. It is retails for $2.99, and it claims to give you immediate extreme volume and lift. That it's a buildable formula without clumping, and it has long-lasting power. Let's bring in the video of me applying it for the first time so you can see what the brush looks like and how it applies. Today's mascara is Jordana Best Lash Extreme. 
This one has a long, thin conical wand with brush-like bristles. It's a dry formula that applies very easily. I prefer a dry formula to a really, really wet formula because I'm kind of a clod with mascaras because of my aging vision. I can't see anything that well, so it's better for me if I have a dry formula, so that's what I prefer. Um, two coats give longer lashes but not much volume, which is disappointing because it said it gave extreme volume and lift. Uh, I wouldn't call them my best lashes. It makes the tips bend like Dr. Seuss drew them and there are little small clumps all over the place. All right, so for the wear, the lashes look good for three to four hours. Then it started flaking and smudging by five to six hours and I have the video for, to show you of that. And um, it didn't hold a curl, but it caused the uh, ends to curl weirdly. As far as the removal, it needed a makeup removing wipe and washing my face to get it off. So it was about medium in the ease of removal. Overall, this one I was pretty disappointed by, but since it was only $2.99, I couldn't be that upset about it because, you know, for three bucks, what did I expect? All right, the next mascara I tried was Milani Total Cover Mascara. It retails for $4.99 and is available at drugstores. Now, I have heard a lot of beauty bloggers <coughs> raving about Milani products lately, uh, and I had tried a Milani blush that I really liked a lot, so I thought, what the heck, I'll give this mascara a try. Um, its claims are that it's a smear-proof, smudge-free, and built-to-last. It has a three-zone wand for defining, volumizing, and curling. It gives 360-degree instant impact. Let's bring in the video of me trying it out for the first time. I think I have a separate video showing you the brush. The brush is beautiful on this one. When you see it in the package, it's this really pretty pink and green brush. But you know what? It's mascara. The second you stick that brush into the mascara, it gets coated in black, and what's the point of having that thing? You can only see these three zones the first time you use it. They make it so complicated to just put on mascara. But anyway, here's my first time trying it. Today's mascara is Milani Total Lash Cover with three zone wand. This is a fat brush with a combination of rubber and fiber bristles. As I said, it's hard to see the zones with older eyes. The end of the brush is bald, which I really didn't like very much because it gets clumped up with mascara and then it's like an invitation for it to, you know, get places it's not supposed to be. It did a good job at lengthening the lashes, but it still transferred to my eyelids. It was clumpy and full of fibers that caused more clumps. So as you can see in the video, I have like a big clump here. I had it transferred up here. It was a mess. It was all over my face. This one is such a wet formula and it took so long to dry. So let's go to the videos of the wear, checking in three hours later. And I really thought that it was um, one of the best for length but it started flaking in only two hours and with all those clumps you know you would have to comb it out afterwards just to get rid of all the clumps and junk and that's too much work for me <laughs> so anyway um, it transferred to the waterline which was interesting I had like little lash marks on my lower waterline from the upper lashes um, and it smudged below my eyes at six hours it didn't flake much more though after the two hour major flake fest so um, overall the pros on this one were that in, it was really good at lengthening the lashes not so great at volume uh, as far as the curling goes, it claimed to be a curling mascara, and I didn't really see much in the way of curling on my eyelashes, but mine are very short and stumpy, and so mine barely curl even with a heated curling iron. So that's a little caveat there. The cons are that it was really clumpy, it smudged and flaked uh, early on in the day. All right, the next mascara I tested was Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. This is on the expensive end. It retails for $20, and I got it at Ulta. Now, this is a four-in-one mascara for lengthening, curling, volumizing, and conditioning, and it's infused with olive esters to, like it said, condition your eyelashes. So we're looking for lengthening, curling, volumizing, and conditioning here with this one. So let's cut to the video, and I'll show you how it applied for the first time and the packaging. Today's mascara is Tarte Light Camera Lashes. This is... <laughs> the grooviest packaging out of all of them. Okay, this one had a long, thin wand with uneven brush-like bristles. It's a dry formula that applies really easily. Uh, two coats give longer, thicker lashes. The curled side lashes stuck together making triangles, and I found that this happened on most of them after I curled the one side. Once I ran the brush through that side, my lashes tended to 
clump together at the ends, kind of forming these little triangles. And there was no like clumps or fibers or junk in it that came out, at least on this wearing. On to the wear. The lashes look good for a full 12 hours. So the way you put this one on was the way it looked all through the day. It had very little flaking, but I'm not going to say no flaking because it did have a little. There were a few flakes here and there. Um, it didn't have any transfer or smudging though, and smudging is my biggest problem. My number one um, pet peeve about mascaras is smudging because I have very teary eyes and I always get little gloobers down here. And I gotta say, with all of these, I didn't really have that. And then flaking is my second one. So very little flaking, no transfer, no smudging. It didn't hold a curl or cause curl to happen. And this is one of the ones where it said it was a curling mascara and it didn't do anything for curling my lashes. Um, it was really, really difficult to remove. I had to use a makeup remover towelette because I hate rubbing my eyes like that. So I would do the first thing, then I would wash my face with my face cleaner, mild face cleaner and water. And then when I towel dried, I would have big raccoon eyes. So then I would have to go in again with eye makeup remover and a Q-tip to get the rest off. So overall, this one I thought was pretty good. I liked it, like I said, more the first few times I used it. And then the more I used it, the less I liked it. Plus the removal was so difficult that you know, it didn't make it great for me. All right, so those were the bottom three. Now for the top three. So this one is MAC False Lashes. This retails for $22. It says, uh, and it's an extreme black. It says it's intensely inky, lightweight, mousse-like formula creates the illusion of lash extensions with a unique double lush brush. All right, so let me cut to the video showing you how it applied for the first time. Today's mascara is MAC False Lashes in False Black. This is a long, thin conical wand with brush-like bristles. It was a medium wet formula that applied very easily, but being a little wetter, I did get it, you know, sort of on me a little more. <laughs> um, two coats gives longer lashes with good separation and some volume. The lashes look natural but better and there was no clumping. And what I really like this one is what I just said, which is that the lashes looked natural. They didn't look like they were drawn on by Dr. Seuss. They didn't look like false lashes. They just looked like my lashes, but better, which is what I go for on, you know, an everyday look. On to the wear. So on this one, it wore all day with no flaking or smudging. And that was awesome, because as you know, that's my pet peeve and I hate that. It looked really good after 12 hours. It removes easily with a makeup towelette and face wash. So that was great. It came right off. I really liked this one when I was testing it. And at first I thought, oh, this is the winner. I'm going to use this one all the time. And then when I put the grid of six mascaras up side by side, this one didn't stand out to me as being the best on length or the best on volume or the best on anything. So that's why it's kind of in the middle of the pack. It is one that I have started using more often because I do like that it's easy to apply, easy to remove, gives me natural looking lashes, but uh, that's why it's in the top three, but still sort of in the middle of the pack. Next mascara is CoverGirl Clump Crusher. This is one of my all-time favorite mascaras. If you read the uh, what I'm wearing for makeup list in most of my videos, it is the Clump Crusher. And in most of my tutorials, this is what I wear. It retails for $7.99 and you can get it at drugstores. This formula was the Waterproof Extensions Formula. This one says that it's a fiber stretch, no clump mascara that gives you buildable volume and length. The curved brush features precision bristle spacing to reduce clumping for long separated lashes. All right, so let me bring in the video of me applying it. Today's mascara is the CoverGirl Clump Crusher. So this one does have, as it said, a curved brush and it has like those rubber spiky bristles. It's a dry formula, really, really dry formula, <laughs> super dry formula. So that's good for me because I don't tend to get it all over my face. So it had no transfer, but it offers minimal length and volume with the first coat. But as it said, it is buildable. So it gives no clumps and the lashes are separated as it's claimed in the marketing. And this is one of the cons though, is that it's such a dry formula that it takes so many passes to get just one coat on there and see anything happening. It's kind of a pain in the butt and I, it's more work to apply. So let's go to the wear videos. It didn't flake, smudge or transfer for 10 hours. So at the three hour mark, the six hour mark and the 10 hour mark, it still looked really good. For removal, this was one of the easiest to remove, either with just a 
makeup removing towelette or just washing your face with face cleanser and water. So that's great. So overall, the pros on this one are that it's long wearing with no flaking or smudging for 10 hours. And it also is has no clumps. Uh, and what I noticed in the pictures was that even though this is the one where I didn't curl my lashes, this is one of the ones that offered the most curl. So that curved brush really does help to curl the lashes. The cons were that it doesn't give much volume and it's much more work to apply. So let's move on to the winner. It's L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga Mascara. This retails for $79, $79 for mascara, but that's why it's the winner. No, sorry, $7.99, and it's available at drugstores. Um, I was really curious. I saw the ads for this, you know, those uh, Japanese comic books, manga, you know, those uh, cartoon character eyelashes. I thought, oh boy, this, this sounds great. I want to give this a try, so I bought it. The marketing on this claims that it's an oversized, over-the-top, lash volume. The cone shaped 360 degree flexor brush builds up to 15 times overload volume. So this one is all about the volume. So let's see how it applied. Today's mascara is L'Oreal Voluminous Miss Manga Mascara. It has a long conical flexible wand with uneven brush-like bristles. So it kind of looks like a Christmas tree a little bit. It's kind of a medium wet formula that applies easily but for me, the wetness, I get it all over the place, so that was kind of a bummer. Um, two coats gives longer, slightly thicker, pointy lashes, although not much volume, considering that the marketing was all about the volume. Um, and it's easy to apply, and it has a flexible brush that you can kind of bend it, you know, to put it on like that, but I gotta say, after you get mascara on it again, who's gonna touch it to bend it? You have to use a tissue to touch it so you don't get mascara all over your hands. And then once you put it back in the tube, it goes back to straight, so you would have to bend it every time. So anyway, kind of silly. I actually found it that because it has that little break where it bends, the tip is a little floppy, and so putting it on, it's a little weird, because it's because it doesn't like brush through firmly, you know, it kind of like your lashes even make it kind of bend a little bit. So that was a little strange. But overall, it was fairly easy to apply. Uh, it did hold the curl very well and it wasn't very clumpy. All right, on to the wear. It held the curl for 12 hours. So the 12 hour wear I thought on this one was excellent, superior. Um, there were a couple tiny flakes at three hours and a few more at seven hours, but no noticeable smudging or transfer. The lashes looked long and pointed for 10 to 12 hours, and it was easy to remove with just soap and water or face wash and water. All right, overall, this one was really good. The pros are the long pointed lashes with no problems in it for 12 hours and that it was easy to remove. The cons were for me that flexible brush where it just is not stiff enough to kind of rake through the lashes really easily. So let me now bring in the pictures of the grid showing all six of them at first application. And then all six after 12 hours. All right, so this is the award ceremony for the mascaras. <laughs> so I actually still have these four, Miss Manga and the Clump Crusher were the winners. The Mac came in second, the Tarte came in third, and the Jordana and the Milani came in last. But for the awards, the best curl was a tie between the CoverGirl Clump Crusher and the L'Oreal Miss Manga. The Clump Crusher for curling the lashes without a curler and holding the curl all day, and the Miss Manga for holding the curl after using a eyelash curler. All right, for best length, the Milani, which I can't seem to find, one for overall length, but it was really close. I think all of them were really good at lengthening, and so some were better than others, but you know, it was just like a hair difference, but on the pictures, I think it looked like the Milani took it. All right, for best volume, the winner was the Tarte, Lights, camera, lashes. That one clearly in the pictures it gave much more thickness at the base and my lashes looked almost like false lashes except they didn't have that huge length. The winner for the least flaking and smudging was Miss Manga. 
the best overall wear, I am giving it a tie between the Clump Crusher and the Miss Manga. And the easiest removal, again, is a tie between Clump Crusher and Miss Manga. So, the winner overall, it's a tie for me between Clump Crusher and Miss Manga. The losers were the Milani and the Jordan, and the middle of the road were the two most expensive at $22 and $20, respectively. So since they were only middle of the road, that you could buy uh, four of these for the price of one of these, I would stay with these guys. And I'm sorry if I missed um, putting in something that you wanted to see, but give me suggestions for future ones because I love doing the mascara testing and I still would like to keep looking because there's so many new things out every day. I'd like to do some more mascara testing, so give me your ideas of what you'd like to see. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. So as always, take care, everybody, and have a great day. Bye-bye.